All right, guys, welcome back. All right, so today we're gonna be working on the Mustang again. So we're gonna be dropping the transmission. We're gonna be pulling it out and we're gonna be tearing it apart, inspecting it, see if there's anything damaged there that needs to be replaced. We're gonna be most likely upgrading to some carbon synchros and then some bronze or billet fork pads uh, just to make this transmission a little bit stronger so that when I go into start doing road racing autocross and potentially drifting too i want to get into the drifting it looks like it'd be a lot of fun with this car i'll be able to have a transmission that's built to be able to handle the amount of abuse that it's going to be getting also inspecting the clutch see if i maybe damaged the clutch or something still trying to figure out what that clunk is i didn't find any loose bolts so i'm gonna go ahead and be safe and just take uh, transmission now and inspect the clutch and see if maybe the clutch got damaged and then we go from there if it is most likely upgrade to a dual uh, clutch setup anyways so it won't be as bad anyways because i already have the transmission out but aside from that other things i'm gonna be working on while the transmission's pulled and everything so i do get a lot of heat inside of the center console area from the transmission because it's kind of opened up and there's not really anything there to prevent the heat from getting up so i'm going to be putting up some plating or some heat shielding on that center like transmission tunnel area and then I'm putting a little bit more padding on here on the part where the center console goes to try to minimize some of that heat soaking into the car obviously now that i have the ac fix it's not as big of an issue but when i didn't have the ac fix it does get hot in there and since i plan on tracking the car I'm not going to have the AC running, so I don't want that center console area getting hot and then kind of getting onto me. Obviously, race cars get hot, so I mean, you're going to have to live with that. Racing in a race car, it gets hot. You deal with a lot of heat soaking into the car, but if I can minimize some of that heat with just some slight heat shielding, stuff like that, I mean, it's not going to add too much weight, maybe a couple 10, 20 pounds, if not. But as far as like driver comfort, this is still going to be kind of like a daily driver, so I want to be able to do that so I can not feel my red leg getting hot from uh, that heat soaking through there. So that's another thing I'm doing. And obviously, I still don't have any of the airbags hooked up just because the, the SRS module still has codes in it. So while I have the car up on jacks and then being worked on, I'm gonna take that module out, get that module sent off, get those codes reset. I'm gonna take this seat, I'm gonna pull the seat off, take that connector from the airbag for the seat, cut the wires off of it, and then we're going to solder in a 2 amp resistor on it and then plug that back in just to get rid of the airbag light so once I get the module I get to put the airbags back in everything everything is being hooked up good to go and then for the time being I'll probably just sew this back up I'm not going to worry about replacing the airbag on this for the time being because I'm not really worried about an airbag on the seat because I do plan in the future getting a bucket seat and a harness setup and it's most likely not going to have an airbag so I'm not too worried about having the airbag deleted with the resistor in line. From there, the ABS still isn't working properly. It's still not giving me traction control on ABS. That's not working, which I'm not too worried about because I don't really use it as is. So I'll probably just leave that as is. I definitely, whenever, if I do end up taking this engine out and repairing it, if something is wrong with it, then I'll go through, unloom this whole wiring harness to the fuse box and then try to see if I can find maybe there's a wire somewhere for this connector that's damaged, maybe one of the pins is damaged, something like that. So I'm gonna try to figure out what it is that's causing the ABS to not work. So with that, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get under the car, start losing stuff up, take the drive shaft out, drain the transmission, pull the transmission off, and then do my further inspections to try to figure out what I might have actually damaged. So we'll go from there. Whoa. All right, transmission is drained. Fluid looks pretty good. You don't really see any flakes in it or anything like shiny. So I threw the plug back in. I'm going to go ahead and unbolt the rear of the drive shaft which I'm going to go ahead and throw it in the gear up there so that way I can keep it from rotating. And then probably also just pull the e-brake so the wheels don't spin. And then loosen up the bolts in the back to the rear end. And then once I loosen those, pull the um, drive shaft out. Slide the drive shaft back. You might have also noticed uh, in the back here, uh, I have a very, very slight leak on the back of the tail housing. 
So I'm definitely gonna be swapping out that uh, rear main seal on this, which I already have, so I can definitely do that um, as soon as I take it out. If I don't need to replace anything there, I can at least do this rear main seal because that is actually bad. So you can see there, it's slowly leaking by. And then, once I get the drive shaft out, I shouldn't have to remove the exhaust. But I might loosen it up and move it out of the way just because I am going to end up having to adjust it. Because this is slightly off on the left. It's kind of hanging down a little bit lower on the left for some reason. So I might as well just loosen it all up, readjust it, and then tighten it back up once it's all nice and straight. So it looks a little better. So from here... Uh, I guess just go ahead and get that drive shaft out and we'll go from there. Alright guys, welcome back. So yesterday, we got the transmission off, and then we also got the bell housing off, and so we have pretty much the clutch exposed. From what I can see visually, uh, everything looks pretty good in there. Doesn't look like there's anything really damaged in there. Uh, I'll have to try to super rotate it or get my bore scope in there and try to inspect from the side. I might end up just taking the pressure plate off just to inspect the clutch. I'll have to find my uh, clutch alignment tool. I might end up doing that because I'm going to have to put that in there so I can put it back on. Uh, but I am going to go in here. I'm going to check to see if I can get in there and replace the pilot bearing. And also while I have this off. I have a safe cylinder over there. I'm gonna replace it with a stainless steel clutch line so that way I can start building this up. Uh, and then over here, I'm gonna have to find a way to get this transmission off the jack. It should be low enough to where I can be able to pull it out from under the car. Uh, if not, I might have to try to get it up on one of those uh, furniture dollies and then lift the car up another notch on the stands and go from there over here uh there was a little bit of coolant now i noticed that there was dripping what i think is the issue is this this connection right here i think it's either up here or down here somewhere over here is leaking so you can already see kind of like if i put my hand out there there's a little bit of residue there so this is leaking somewhere I think it's either up here or over here. So I'm gonna have to take that off, inspect it, see if it needs probably uh, either new seals or it's damaged and then I just gotta replace it along. Cause it probably was damaged from the accident and it wasn't too noticeable until now. Uh, so I'm gonna have to drain the coolant before I do that and then pull it off, inspect it, inspect the surfaces, see if they're nice and smooth and then replace the seals as necessary. So hopefully that was the only thing that the coin was coming from because there was some coin near the back that I noticed. But then when I was taking this off, I noticed there's coin on this belt too. You can see right there. Yeah, it's definitely cool. So that's that's awesome. But fortunately it might just be from that pump thing. So it would be just the seal. 
and then whatever it dripped on, I kind of just slowly worked its way to the back. Uh, I am going to go in there and inspect to see if there is coolant dripping from there or else still, just to be safe. Over here, so I got my slide hammer and my pilot bearing puller. So together, and actually, hopefully they fit. I imagine they will because they're by the same brand, OEM. All right, I got this. And I got this sled hammer. All right, well, went in there, tried to see if it'll fit. So definitely, this is not long enough to slide in there with the uh, clutch still on. The clutch itself gets in the way. But also at the same time, I think these teeth are way too big. They're bigger than the inner diameter of the pilot bearing. So I'm probably gonna have to find a different type of puller to make it work. Um, I'll probably, I'll check this one and then compare it to the replacement I have, see if it fits in there. But it's either gonna be a tight fit or not gonna work at all. So my best bet is just try to find one that's a little bit smaller to use to try the pull the pilot bearing out. So for now, I'm going to have to put a pause on that one and then get back to it once I find the right tool. Okay, so. I didn't end up recording because <laughs> so I didn't want to record myself uh, hurting myself or dying just in case. But uh, so, can I see right there? So, that jack stand in the back, I removed the uh, transmission uh, insulator right here and I braced it on the back here and I slid over right beside the transmission, kind of laid down on my back. And then I put my arms underneath here. I didn't want to support by the input shaft. I didn't want to mess with the input shaft or anything like that. So I supported it from the front, lifted it up. Then I used my body to push the transmission jack out of the way. And I took this towel, set it underneath it as best I could, and then slowly let it down. And then from the rear, I slid over, and the same thing. Just lifted it up, moved the uh, jack out of the way, and then just made sure the towel is completely laid down flat underneath it. So I'm not like scraping it on the concrete and I'm slowly trying to pull it out and it's very 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 close uh, the only thing that's not clear right now is the shifter which I'm probably just gonna end up doing I had to raise the trans or the car either two or three I think it was two more notches up which is a little higher than I would want to be using on these jack stands but it should be fine it's holding out it was high enough to clear the height of the transmission itself it's just not clearing the shifter i need maybe another two inches so i'm gonna go ahead move this a little bit more over like this let me get the jack under here and then i'll be able to just jack it up a little bit more being very careful not to jack it higher than the opposite side if i need to raise the other side i'm gonna do that first before continuing onward but let's go ahead and pull this transmission out if need to i might even just turn it sideways to get it out but i'm gonna see if i can lift this up enough to clear and i think that's that's what i feel comfortable lifting it up so I'll turn it a little bit sideways Second, turn the sideways a little bit. Uh, okay, cleared that portion of the frame. Uh, oh. Oh. Just heavy. Okay, it's almost there. Side was a little, little. There we go. And she's out. All right. 
So, I'm my old roommate. Uh, put this little table together. Not too shabby. Did it in the course of the day. So, I gave him the specs for the length, transmission width, and the whole thing for shaft. Looking at the surface of the transmission now, there is, at least on the Magnum, uh, uh, face plate. So this stud, I forgot to mention to him to make that second stud for this. But there's also this portion right here. I'm not sure what this is for. But that is potentially going to get in the way. So we'll see how that works out. Because I do have these little studs. Uh, the little uh, alignment dowels. So we have these two alignment dowels. The surface where the hydraulic bearing sits. And then this rise right here. This is for the counter shaft. And then this little peg right here. So I'll just have to get a measurement from here. And probably just drill out a little hole myself. I'll just probably have to get a saw that's about that size. The ladder. But let's go ahead. It's lined up. Out of the way. Perfect. Okay. Remove these screws that go for the hydraulic release bearing. For some reason, one of them is longer than the other. I'm not really sure why, but as long as they screw in like so, they look. You actually, no, they're two different screws, but this is what it is. Go ahead, set these on the side. I'm not sure why this tape's here, so I'm gonna take that off. Then right here, you have your little label plate so you can identify what kind of transmission it is. And the sticker up top here too. Like I said, I have to get this measurement, the distance between these two, and then cut out another hole in this for that little marking there. For now, I'm gonna try to see if it'll actually slip right in there. And give it a shot. Alright, got the pressure plate and the clutch out. Uh, overall, pressure plate looks fine. I don't see any specific areas where it was getting hot. Overall, it looks pretty good. Not too bad, not too shabby at least. Uh, the clutch itself, you can see it's kind of discolored a little bit, but overall not too bad. Uh, I definitely broke it in. A little off. With these ceramic discs, you can't slip them. Uh, and then you can kind of see the reason why they get hot. Um, the pressure plate's fine. The flywheel looks fine. This clutch itself, you can see the discoloration to it. But overall, it's not too bad. I can see some markings on it for sure. But throughout the whole thing, I don't really notice any blue, like completely scorched marks on it, which is good. So I'll probably end up just throwing it back in as is, probably clean a little bit of it off. But I think that's what all of this over here was, was uh, all of the ceramic material coming off of it. And it, you can tell it does look like it's kind of coming apart a little bit which is understandable because it's this material the way it is. Um, so as of now, I am not going to be upgraded to the twin disc quite yet. It is also ceramic uh, discs. So I might as well just use this until it goes. And then when I decide to do whatever kind of forced induction kit, whether it be turbo or supercharger, upgrade to it then. But for now, this will be perfectly fine. I can invest more time and money into uh, building this, which 
I'll be tearing into here soon. I just want to get a few more tools before I start doing that. And then also want to look into it a little bit more, make sure I know how to take this thing apart before I start doing that. Now one thing for sure I am going to be replacing is the output shaft seal because that is slightly leaking. So I want to get that um, done as soon as I can. And then from there, probably clean up the case and everything, probably swap out the, um, the cover and then go for a billet one that has the bungs and spares on it and then get a pump for it and then use that for whenever I'm racing so that way I keep the gears covered and um, fluid and keep them nice and coated and safe at the track especially at high speed turns it'll make sure that they're completely covered and it's not oil starving third and fourth up front because um, there are some more likely the gears I'll be running majority of the time so I want to make sure those are doing perfectly fine uh, over here I'm going to go ahead and get under there, and then I ordered a smaller pilot bearing removal tool, one that would fit a little bit better inside of there. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and install that, use the slide hammer to pull it out, and then install the new one. And then it should be good to reinstall this in there, and then start working on the transmission right after that.